Hi friends, it's Mrs. Bailey and today we're going to be reading Adam the Ant. And this is a book about insects. Do you know a lot about insects? If you don't, you're going to find out a little bit today. It was written by G.D. Bailey, the author, and illustrated by J.B. Four, the person who drew the pictures. And remember, the author is always placed first and the illustrator is placed second. So we're going to jump right into it. Try to follow along as best you can, okay? It says, hi, I'm Adam the Ant. And boy, do I have a story to tell you. It's about the day I realized that we are not alone in this world. Now, don't get me wrong. I know all about the two-legged and four-legged creatures that roam the earth. But this other thing? Whoa! It's not like anything you've ever known or want to know. So it looks like Adam here is thinking about the two-legged and the four-legged creatures that roam the earth. Do you know who or what those two-legged and four-legged creatures could be? It all started one autumn day in October. Autumn is what? most Americans call fall. The gang and I were hanging out in the barn doing our thing. Wait, let me back up a second. I guess I should start by introducing the gang. First, we have Rocky Roach. Next to Rocky is Greta Grasshopper. Then Lily Ladybug. Betty butterfly with the beautiful wings and there at the end is Bob. Gonna be honest, we're not exactly sure what type of insect Bob is, but we know he's an insect because he's showing all the signs. Or if I pretend that I'm a teacher, I might say he presents all the characteristics of an insect. Now, what are the characteristics of an insect? Do you know? I think we're going to find out. Sorry, I digress. As I was saying, Bob shows all the signs of being an insect. He has two antenna. There are his antenna. A head. Of course, there's his head. A thorax. That's that middle section right here. An abdomen, that is this bottom section right down here, and an exoskeleton. An exoskeleton is a hard shell on the outside of our bodies that helps protect us. All telltale signs of being an insect. Therefore, Bob is part of the gang. Oh, and he has six legs too. You can barely see them, but they're there. Now I can see his six legs just fine, can't you? There's one two all the way around. They're not that skinny, I don't think. So now normally a thorax, well, let's start at the beginning. The antenna, his antenna right up here. That is what an insect usually feels with. They touch, they smell the world around them. Um, that it, it's what lets them know what is around them. They know if things are hot or cold, they can feel the wind. It kind of acts as just their sensors and they're also called feelers. Right here, that's the head. That's where the eyes and ears, uh, eyes and mouth is. So they can see things and they can eat with their head, just what a normal head would be. Um, but now I said, I accidentally said ears. Ears are usually on an insect what they use their antenna for, but not always, not all insects. Thorax, that's this middle section right here. And that's where the legs and wings usually are. Now on Bob, his legs, he's got two legs down here. He still has six legs, but normally an insect's all of their legs would be right here on the thorax. But Bob's a little bit different. And then we have the abdomen. That's the largest section. 
and the section at the bottom. And that's where um, their organs are, like the heart, stomach, their digestive system. So insects are pretty complex creatures, don't you think? Anyway, as we were all sitting in the Johnson's barn discussing the superiority we possess as six-legged beings, we heard a sound. Well, most of us heard a sound. Bob didn't. I think it was because he was too busy showing us his thorax and his skinny six legs. Of course, Betty thought I was making fun of Bob, which I most definitely was not, because I do not make fun of insects. I was merely making an observation. Are we not allowed to do that anymore? Bob's legs are excruciatingly thin. That's all I'm saying. I don't think his legs are that thin, do you? I wonder why Adam says that. And see, here's Betty. She says, stop it, Adam. And Adam's like, what? Hmm. Oh, uh, one more thing. He thinks that Bob didn't hear the sound because he was too busy talking to them about himself. But I'm sitting here looking at Bob and I'm thinking I might see another reason that Bob didn't hear the sound. What do you think? I don't know. I know that a lot of insects hear through their antenna, but I'm not so sure about Bob. He's a little bit different. Well, after a minute or two of not hearing any more sounds, we went back to listening to Bob. By this time, he had moved on to talking about his antenna on his head. They're purple, by the way. I'm not saying anything. We can't help what color antenna we have. It's just that Betty seems to really like them. <sighs> so... As I was saying, Bob was talking about his feelers or antenna, and bam, we heard the noise again. Call me crazy, but I think Bob's antenna sensed a sound because even he seemed to recognize something was there. I also think I'm getting an idea of why Adam isn't such a fan of Bob. Did you notice how he says, Betty really likes Bob's antenna. I think Adam might have a little bit of a crush on Betty. At that moment, we realized we weren't the only insects who heard a noise. The Fab Four flyers from the wheelbarrow came pouring out of their tray straight into the barn. Daryl Dragonfly, Molly Moth, Freddy Fly, and Barbie. They were all buzzing around our heads saying something, so we sent in our secret weapon, Betty, to see what they were buzzing on about. Everyone loves Betty. I think Adam really loves Betty. Apparently, they thought the sound was coming from near the door, so they decided to send Barbie up. Barbie has a stinger. She rarely uses it, but she has it just in case, and this was one of those just-in-case moments. You see Betty up there? She's hiding behind that lamp trying to hear what they're saying or buzzing on about. The gang and I decided the Fab Four Flyers seemed to have a solid plan in place, so we chose to take a back seat on this particular mission, but not because we were scared or anything. And it says right here, Triple F's got this. I don't know. Do they look scared to you? And when it says they chose to take a back seat on this particular mission, it means they're choosing to let somebody else handle it. I wonder why. About that time, we saw Barbie flying right toward a strange looking thing in the corner by the door. It looked like Mr. Johnson's discarded dental floss, but we had a feeling it wasn't. That does kind of look like dental floss, but it looks like something else to me, too. What does it look like to you? The next thing we know, some hideous-looking eight-legged creature is smiling at Barbie, and he calmly says, Hello. 
And for some incomprehensible reason, Barbie says hi back to it. What do you think that hideous eight-legged creature is? Then suddenly, Barbie gets trapped inside the dental floss. We all, even my gang, started yelling words of encouragement to her. Don't look into its eyes. Don't struggle. Don't buzz. Don't freak out. Don't cry. Don't stop believing. The words of encouragement must have helped because somehow, some way, Barbie was able to free herself and fly away. And over here, the creature is saying, Phew. Hmm. We all ran out behind her, but not because we were scared or anything. We just wanted to make sure she was okay. I'm not so sure about that. Kind of looks scared to me, but I don't know. A week has passed since that frightful day and things have calmed down on the Johnson's farm. Two-legged, four-legged, and six-legged beings are living in harmony once more. All is right with the world. Though we did decide to relocate, that means move, but not because we were scared or anything. We were just ready for a change of pace. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think they moved just because they were ready for a change of pace? They seemed to really like the Johnson's barn. So from here on out, if you know of any beetles or fleas or any other six like of insects who would like to join the coolest group around, send them on over. Our address is 246 Johnson Farm Road. They'll find us under the back porch steps. Not in the barn, but not because we're scared or anything. Huh, I'm not so sure about that. And it looks like they're back to their same old stuff, except they have a blue bottle cap. They're all talking. Well, no, they're listening while Bob is talking. All they're hearing is blah, blah, blah. Poor Bob. But at least they keep him in their group. So, guys, I hope you learned something about insects. That was a fun little book to read. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.